Great, I'm Will Hobson, Digital PR Manager Edit. It's actually my first talk, so I'm about to lose my virginity. So I've never actually done that on a stage with loads of people, so let's go. Um, so great, I'm gonna be talking about why social media should be part of your search strategy. Um, what I kind of did last week is did a little bit of a poll on Twitter and just asked everyone in the industry what they thought. Interestingly, everyone kind of said, no, social media shouldn't be part of your search strategy, but I kind of disagree with that, and hopefully through this talk, I'm going to tell you why and give you five reasons of how you can use social in your search strategy and how I do. So, as you can see from this report from Ofcom last year, over 40% of users on social media use it as their main source of news. So everyone's scrolling, looking down, looking at the news. That's what I do when I wake up in the morning. I kind of look on Twitter and say, what's going on in the news, that's where I'm consuming news. So we need to be there to consume it, especially as PR people, especially as search people, we need to be on the, in that platform. So how do I use social media as part of my search strategy? And that's through digital PR. So to give you a little back, bit of background about edit, we get links on sites like these every month for clients like these, and that's using social media at the heart. So basically, I'm gonna talk through the five reasons of how we use that. So starting off with ideation. So I always find ideation is the, probably the hardest thing to do when you're coming up with a campaign. So I really struggle trying to kind of get that and find what idea is gonna work. Is it gonna work? Is it not gonna work? You don't know. But social at the start of that is great to understand what other people are doing, understand what you could be doing, and it'll really influence that campaign. So to kind of get started when I start with a brainstorming session, I go to the paid media team because they're the ones that are gonna know the audience the best. They're the ones that are gonna have the data because they've got to, got to get to that and pay for them. So they've got to put money behind it. So they know their audience. So using things like Facebook ads, you can find out where your audience are, what they like, what they don't like, and what kind of platforms they're using. So kind of go there first for the basis of your campaign. Figure out what your audience like and how you can get to them with your PR campaign. So something that um, Instagram have been using quite often is you can actually go into the settings and see what kind of ad interest you're like. So this is my ad interest, which is kind of pretty spot on. So I almost want to do that for your clients and understand, okay, what do your audience like? Where, where are they gonna go and how they're gonna do it? So use that as a basis for your campaign to understand what you can talk about and the topics that you might be able to talk about. You can also use search listening for this. So social listening, such as Linkfluence, that's just a tool that we use, but there's so many out there. But kind of, again, use that as a base to understand the topic. So I've given you an example here of Mecca Bingo, and what we do is put their kind of handles into the social media platform and understand what topics you can then talk about. So for Mecca Bingo, it might be women who like it and they like Love Island. So we could do something in from a PR campaign on something about Love Island. So it just gives you those topics to go to your brainstorm and kind of have a little bit more about and kind of know some more knowledge. Um, another platform that's really good to use is obviously Reddit. I use it again as a news source. So just clicking on everything from like what's top trending, what's rising, and you can kind of see what's actually in there to then again tap into you for your PR campaign and use it for that as inspiration. So last week, I think the top topic was Keanu Reeves and how different and how he still looks really young, even like 50 years later. And they were comparing graphics from the 90s in like video games to graphics of now and how he looks different. So it's again seeing the conversations that are really engaged and it's got some really engaged users in there. So I actually took inspiration on this for a campaign that I ran and it was for one of my clients, Payment Sense, who provide card machines for small businesses. And we obviously saw that Marvel's huge. Everyone loves Marvel. So you can kind of see within this, they've got a huge amount of audience, a huge engaged, at least 5% of them are engaged at all times. So it's a huge conversation to tap into. So what we did for Payment Sense is took this conversation of Marvel and kind of tapped into that, into fictional fortunes. So we looked at what fictional businesses were worth and how much they'd be worth through in real life. And this and then enabled us to outreach to publications that Payment Sense might not have been able to go to before, and you can tap into those markets. So again, using social to really inform your strategy, not necessarily saying it's a ranking factor and it has to be part of your wider picture, but you can gain in other areas from an SEO point of view by using social. So that's just a, a small example of it. Another tool that I use when I'm coming up with this ideation process would be Buzzsumo. So again, just putting a content type in or putting a subject in and seeing what's the top kind of shareable content and which is the top performing content and how it performs and what platform it performs on. So as you can see with Disney, you'll be able to see, okay, this piece of content got so many shares. What was it? Why? What were the backlinks? And you can just really use it as, as inspiration for your ideation. Another thing that people might necessarily join for personal use, but you can also use it for kind of a work-based area as well, would be Facebook and Instagram groups. So 
on Facebook, there's a really funny group called like Rate My Plate, but they also do Rate My Breakfast and things like that. And it's, you can tap into that again for your ideation posts and think, oh, if something's cool in there, it might be able to work for a campaign. So again, going back to kind of the paid side of things when you come up with your audience, figure out what they like, where they are, and then how you can tap into it with your PR campaign to inform your overall search strategy. So one thing that I'd always recommend is to keep your clients close and your competitors closer. Even if you're in-house, keep your competitors close as well. But obviously, you just need to be looking at what everyone's doing. So what I tend to do is monitor all my clients over every social media channel from Pinterest to LinkedIn to Twitter. I've just used Twitter on here as an example. And you can pull their competitors so that you can see what they're doing to inform your, um, inform your strategy and your ideation process so you can then use that for inspiration. So as you see with Bloom and Wild, I'll follow into Flora and that I might see something in Flora have done and that will again inform what I'm gonna do with my ideas. So, and also kind of make sure you're following yourself and make sure you're speaking within your teams and figure out what everyone's doing. It might be that you're in a social team and then there's a PR team who are in a similar campaign. Everyone needs to work together across the channel to kind of pull that out. And again, you'll kind of get ideas that might have been for a social reason, but you can also push them out from a PR point of view. Secondly, make sure you can kind of follow everyone in the industry. So this is just an example with digital PR. There's Twitter's, uh, Twitter's profiles for digital PR examples that you can kind of see that you'll be able to follow and see competitors' campaigns, see what other people are doing in the industry. And then you can use tools like Ahrefs to get those kind of domains or those backlinks that are out there and find out. And that's already informed your, your strategy and your kind of seeding list. So you've got there. So if you can drop that domain into there, see the campaign page, you can see you've already got a kind of the outreach template more or less ready for you. So that's ideation. The second part of why social should be in your, in your search strategy is feedback. So something that I do all the time is talk to journalists on Twitter, kind of keep that conversation going, to hit, hit them up for your ideas. What do you think about this? Then they're going to come back to you in the future and kind of say, OK, I've got, got this. I need a comment. I know that you, you guys at that kind of organization will be able to represent that and be able to really talk about that. So again, just making sure you can tap into everyone over social, but not just Twitter, over Instagram, over LinkedIn. I wouldn't necessarily Facebook because it's you know, a bit stalkerish if you're kind of adding them on Facebook, but definitely at least Twitter. Keep the conversation going. The third part of why social should be part of your search strategy would be for outreach. So a recent study found that 54% of journalists were more likely to engage with you if they already know you, if they've got a personal connection. So going back to the feedback section, if you can build up that personal connection, you can then build up the relationship for them. And then there you go, it's kind of hand in hand that you can work together with outreach. And use it again, not necessarily as standalone, but as a, as a vehicle for your PR outreach. Fourth, I would say amplification. So amplification is obviously something that you need to do when you're running a PR campaign that's not siloed on its own and it's part of a wider conversation. So I'm just going to talk through an example that I personally worked on and then can kind of show how you can use it within your own strategy. So we worked with Ren Kitchens and they came to us because they wanted to work with Lucy Watson. She'd approached them and asked them to do an influencer marketing campaign. So we obviously wanted to do that because it was perfect for brand, it was perfect for kind of social push, brand awareness, everything over Instagram. However, we decided that we wanted more out of it than just social awareness. We wanted to make sure it would drive our search strategy. So what we did is we used it for a dual purpose. We made sure that we could also get backlinks from it. So we created a page on site that was with Lucy that summarized three recipes from her book, and then we were able to use that as a linkable asset to link back to. So again, we set up interviews with places like Daily Mail, Glamour Magazine, sites that necessarily wouldn't cover things that Ren Kitchens were doing, but we were able to then get backlinks from them. So as you can see, just a few of these examples, and really quick campaign, but just shows that you need to be able to use a, a social campaign as a digital PR campaign as well to fuel your social and search strategy. So a digital PR campaign should generate conversation on its own over social media. It shouldn't be siloed. It should kind of all be together. So something we did for Power Now was look at the most stressful tube stations. So we used TFL data to find out which station had the most delays and also social data to see who was complaining. So using keywords such as stressed, or tired, or that type of thing, just so that they were kind of tired of the area. And then we're able to create an infographic which showed that King's Cross was the most stressful tube station and kind of highlight all that across the network. We were then um, able to share this over social because it got engagement from people saying, well, I don't agree. I think that King's Cross is more stressful or I think that Bank is more stressful. So it had that user engagement where people were constantly disagreeing or agreeing and push that over. So kind of what I'm trying to kind of say with this point as well is make sure that your social teams 
Make sure that your social teams are aware of the PR campaigns that are going on. Make sure you're all working together to form the wider strategy. Cool. And the last point is links in general. So using social media as part of your search strategy to get links. So I'm going to talk through a few of my favorite campaigns that are from different brands, not necessarily link building or digital PR campaigns within themselves, but campaigns that have generated links because of another factor. So first of all, Bloom and Wild. So absolutely favorite brand that I've ever, ever worked with. They're amazing. And what they did at Mother's Day was an email marketing campaign that just op allowed you to opt out of their Mother's Day marketing if you had a bereavement or if you had anything that would, you just basically didn't want to see their emails. And it went viral because someone shared it over social. And it was going to all these journalists who were then receiving, who we've already hit up and kind of gifted them with products and talked through other campaigns. So they were seeing this constant shareability of, oh wait, they've been so nice, just as their brand message is so on point through their email marketing, it was then able to generate links. So we just made sure that we optimized what was already happening from an email marketing point of view. So we had a page on site which summarized and which we were able to kind of almost sweep up after all this work happened and generate links back to that site. So kind of not necessarily something that is a link building or a digital PR campaign, but it kind of generated that in the long run. Another one is my absolute, absolute favorite is Greg's. So I'm sure everyone's aware of the vegan sausage roll that's in January, which is like arguably the best PR campaign that's ever happened. Um, their kind of social team are absolutely amazing and so good organically that they literally get PR coverage just for tweeting. So they've got to that level that they will literally tweet something and it will get PR coverage like this. So just again, making sure that you're aware of that so you can generate the backlinks and generate it as part of your search strategy. Next is brain teasers. This is something that may, might have been a digital PR strategy 10, well, well, not 10, five years ago. And you can actually use it for social as well, but then also kind of for link building as well. So something we did with Red Letter Days was look at, so at Christmas, we did like a Santa schedule. So it was actually trying to find out the reindeer within all the Santas. And we would push this out of a social, but you were also were able to generate it for a backlink campaign. Because it, everyone spends a lot of time on site when using these brain teasers, journalists want it. Because journalists have a lot more KPIs than they ever used to have. So if it's traffic, social shares, that type of thing. So they're going to want to see that on page. So yeah, they're kind of a few of my favorite ones. But to kind of recap, I realized I've talked very fast. So I'm literally like blitzing through. But you can all go for lunch, so it's totally fine. Um, to recap, why social is important to be part of your SEO strategy is, first of all, ideation. So making sure that you can use it to fuel that. Making sure that you can kind of find out what your audience likes, what they don't like, and where they are, and how it can inform your, inform your campaign. Secondly, we've got feedback. So when you're in your outreach stage, make sure you're talking to journalists constantly, and you build up that relationship that way. And then third, outreach itself. Make sure that you're following up on your outreach with following up on your outreach over Twitter, over Facebook, over Instagram, just kind of even, I wouldn't necessarily pitch on there, but then just kind of you're following up with that. Fourth would be amplification, so making sure that any kind of PR campaign that you're doing, you're also amplifying it over social and just tying those teams together. And then last of all, because everyone loves links, it's going to get links, so that's amazing. But it should be part of your search strategy, and I realize I've gone very fast, but I hope you've all enjoyed. Perfect. Thank you.